Welcome back to the channel and what we're going to look at doing is starting off with the very 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 basics of using P5 Play. So if you are new and you've not used it before you might see in this in this playlist in this series there's a lot and I mean a lot of videos I think like 15 there so far all creating not massively complex games but pretty complex games um, and what I want to do is just strip it back and essentially make a starting video because I sort of go straight into it making some quite decent stuff but I've not really explained some of the basic concepts so first things first you need a Replit account you don't have to use Replit you can use open processing you can use Visual Studio Code you can use whatever you want I just use Replit because that's what I've got my, my class at school to do um, um, and yeah I'm just used to using it but you can use anything you want you don't even have to use anything online you could do it all in a notepad file. Um, if you look on the P5 Play site, it'll explain that. So to explain what P5 Play is, um, it's essentially it's an extension to P5. So P5 itself is a graphics library that uses Canvas, which allows us to create graphics on the screen. Um, and P5 Play uh, is open source and free. And it uses a bunch of libraries. So it uses Plank, which is a physics library. Uh, it uses P5. And it's been using various things. If you look at the site, you can see there's a little link to if you want to play it online. And it shows who's used it. Scroll down. You even get a little picture of me on there. Um, and some of my students that have uh, gone ahead and done some testimonials. So for local development, we're going to copy and paste this. We're going to go to our index.html. So, well, that's the other good thing about Replit is that it gives you all these files so you don't have to do much work. And then we're going to delete all of this rubbish because we don't need any of it. We only need the functions, which is setup and background. So, we're going to press run just so we've got a nice clean page. And we're going to get straight into it. So, one of the functions you're going to want to have is a clear function. Uh, and I'll explain why in a moment. And then we're just going to do background zero now background you can put in zero 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 like that which is um our red green and blue values you might have seen that in a previous video where i draw the circle um so do that we should have a nice black background and then we have a create canvas function where we can set the width and the height of our canvas as well um and yeah it's just quite simple there's nothing particularly special about it but I will be honest, if you're just going to have a black background, you're better off just putting 000, zero, zero, but I might decide I want a green background so I can change that green value to 255. It's going to be no red, no blue, loads of green, and you can do whatever you want for that. Maximum of 255. Um, you can choose your colours, whatever it is. Um, so yeah, so that's our, our background. We keep it as black because that's a bit of a gross colour. So we have in P5... If you go to the learn section, so we've got a thing called sprite. Okay, and there's a bit of writing about that. So if I just do new sprite, what you'll find is it creates a nice little square on the screen. Like that. Okay, that is a sprite. Now in most games, a sprite is essentially just a character in your game, something that moves around. It can be an object, it can be a, a character, it can be a player object, it doesn't matter. And in the constructor, what I can do is I can go ahead and add in some properties. Okay, so I can say uh, the X position and the Y position. So I might say 100, 100. And then you want the width and height. So let's say 20 and 20. And then it's Collider, which we're going to look at colliders in a little bit more detail in a minute. But if I do that, it should go ahead and draw me a small little square, sort of around here somewhere, um, like that. And that's static. Now it can't move. Now there's a bunch of things we can do. We could just set the position and do all of these properties later on, which is quite often what I do. So let's make a variable. Let's just say let sprite test. Okay, that's my variable name. That's my test of a sprite. So now I've got it as a variable. What I can do is I can do sprite test dot. Now let's say I want to make a circle. What I might do is do sprite test dot diameter equals 30. And what it's going to do is it's going to make that into a circle. When it comes on. Um, whilst waiting for it to load, um, I might also do sprite test dot color equals red like that. Okay, so provided there's no errors, which they very well might be, it shouldn't be at this point, but 
replit's been a little bit slow for me today. Um, but we can always give it a little refresh and just hope for the best. It's just been a little bit slow. I'm not too sure why. It does happen sometimes with replit. I think it's the only thing I'm a bit disappointed with is that sometimes, whether it's my computer or not, it just seems to crash sometimes. Could be my internet though, but it looks like it's fine. Um, so we can change the sprite's X position. We can change the sprite's Y position so we can move it around. We can change the width and height and the diameter. We can change the rotation. Um, and yeah, there's lots of things we do. So that's wet, it's got a little circle. I might want to just say, right, actually, sprite test dot X uh, equals 200 now. If I don't want to change it in the constructor because it moves in the game. Um, and then, so it's moving across, I might want to add text. So I could do sprite test dot text equals hello, probably what fix, it's too small. Um, so I can add text into there. Sometimes you do have to actually set a, a size for the text, so it might freak out, but no, it's wet. Um, I might rotate it. Dot rotation equals under, I don't know, 50 degrees. Like that. It should spin it, and it spinned it. So that's wet. And those are all your basic ones. The last thing you might do is do dot visible equals false. And it'll make it invisible. Let's say you're hiding something for now or, or whatever. So now it's a black screen. So those are all your basics of your um of your creating a sprite. And you can just change it in the setup. You could have a function, for example, um I could do a function here that I don't know rotates this. I could say if um kb dot presses space. I could say sprite test dot rotation plus equals 10 degrees. So if I press space, it's just going to spin that circle around. And that's been a little bit slow to take. Let's probably make it so you can see it as well. So I can get rid of that. I'll set it to true. Either works. But those are your basics of a P5 sprite. So what we're going to look at in this mini series, so you see there, I can just make it rotate. Is what we're going to do is we'll look at sprites we've just done. Next video, we're going to look at movement and physics, then collisions and overlaps, then some more bits about rotation and physics, and then we're going to look at the idea of a group. Okay, so a really quick one just to literally go over those very, very basic parts. Okay, so seven minutes long, have a little practice making a bunch of sprites, um, setting the collider as well. I didn't talk about the collider in too much detail. Um, but we're going to look at that when we look at the physics. Please like and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you have. Make sure you share it with your friends. I would like to grow the channel. It's a bit of a sort of, you know, bit of a test for me. See if I can get as many subscribers as possible. It'd be nice if I get to like 10,000 or something. That'd be lovely. Um, so if you can help me with that, it would be absolutely fantastic. But I will see you in the next video.